There are a few nice ways to customize your course menu, which appears in the upper left hand corner of your course at all times. The first way is to adjust the menu style. To do that, locate customization in the control panel and under customization select teaching style. There is a select menu style area that appears under teaching style in which you can adjust the background color of the menu or the text color of the menu. You can also change the style of the menu to a button format and there are lots of buttons to choose from in the button library. When you're finished making your changes, you can submit to save them or cancel to discard them. Another way to customize your menu is to hide links from students that you don't want them to see. To do so, click on the option arrows next to the link you'd like to hide and simply select hide link. A small square with a slash through it appears showing that that link is now hidden from students. To show the link again, simply click on the option arrows and select show link. You can also add subheaders and dividers to your menu. Both can be added using this plus sign in the upper left corner of the menu. To add a subheader, select subheader and give it a name. Click submit and the subheader appears at the bottom of the menu. You can move it to wherever you'd like by dragging and dropping using the drag and drop arrows. You can add a divider the same way clicking on the plus sign and selecting divider and the divider automatically drops to the bottom of the menu at which point you can drag and drop it to where you'd like in the menu. You can add a banner to your course which appears above the home page of your course which is usually set as the announcements page. To add a banner simply locate customization under the control panel and select teaching style. Under teaching style scroll to where it says select banner and you can browse your computer for an image and click open when you've selected one and the image will appear here. You can click submit. Adding a course link to an announcement makes it very easy for students to link directly to an area of the course you might be talking about in the announcement. For example, in this announcement about week six, there is a course link that takes students directly to the week six folder and all of its materials. To add a course link to an announcement, from your announcements page, click on create announcement and let's say this was an announcement about week five materials. Check them out today. You scroll down to the course link section and you browse your course for the folder or the individual item you would like to provide a direct link to. So this was an announcement about the week five folder as a whole. So I'm going to select the week five folder and when I click submit, that link will be automatically built into the announcement. Setting announcements or other materials on a timed release allows you to prepare them in advance and release them to students exactly when you want them to be without having to log on and manually make them visible in Blackboard. So I'm going to show you how to set a timed release announcement, but you can do this for tests, course folders, virtually anything you can add to Blackboard, you can create a timed release. So I'll click on create announcement. So let's say, say take your test today. So if it's a reminder for a test, and I know that I'm going to make this test available October 5th from midnight until the very end of the day. So they have those 24 hours to take the test. So I'm going to time release this announcement and the test as well uh, for the, that October 5th date. And I can set it now and I won't have to worry about being up at midnight um, or at the very end of the day to, have, to release that test and remove it. 
So here there is a date restriction option for this announcement. So I'm going to keep it as date restricted and I'm going to ask that it be displayed for students after October 5th at midnight. So I want it to open right away at the beginning of the day. And in this case, I do have a display until option. If I did want to just leave this announcement up indefinitely after the 5th, I could just leave it as is. But I do want it to display only until October 5th. And if you scroll here, there is an end of day option and it will automatically populate 11.59 p.m. Um, you can manually change if I wanted this to be at 12 22 a.m. you can manually adjust the times as needed. And when I submit this announcement it will not go out to students. It will wait until October 5th at at this point 12:22 a.m. You can easily add YouTube videos in Blackboard and Blackboard formats them very nicely for student viewing. I'm going to add a YouTube video in week six. Since it looks like the final projects will be due soon, I'm going to add a video about time management techniques. So I navigate to the area of my course where I would like to add the video, and I'm going to add it right here within the week six folder. I'll click on build content, select YouTube video under mashups, and it takes me to a search box that's searching within YouTube. I'll search for time management techniques and I'm likely going to get a lot of results. You can narrow your search by knowing the exact title of a video that you're looking for and if it's a video you've made and put out to YouTube it might help to search on the exact title and look for a video that was uploaded today for example. You can also change some of the sort functionality. This seven effective time management techniques video looks good. So I'm going to simply click select and Blackboard will automatically populate the title of this video with the title from YouTube. I can change that if I want, but I'm going to leave it. I'm also going to leave the other default options for now and click submit. The YouTube video is added into the folder. I can move it to another part of the folder if I wish. And when students want to watch the video, there's a nice button here that says watch video. And it shows up in a nice window. They can just click play. If you do know the URL of the video, the exact web address, it can be helpful I'm copying and pasting. That was the URL from the seven effective uh, time management techniques video. Sometimes that will work too to find videos. It doesn't always work, uh, but I would definitely try it if you know the video that you're looking for. So I'll submit it again. There'll be two of them in there. But there you can see that's another way to search. To send emails to students in your course directly through Blackboard, click on Course Tools under the Control Panel, and then select Send Email. You can choose who you'd like to send the email to. All users are all students and any other instructors in the course. All student users would be all students in the course. All instructor users, all instructors. And then you can also select individual or small lists of students or groups. I'll choose the single select groups option. If this was single select students, these would all be students' names on this list. Here it's groups that I've divided the class into. So if I just want to send an email to group two, I click on it and move it into the selected area using this arrow. I type in my subject, message. I like to send a copy of this to myself as well as the instructor, just for my files. I can attach 
anything I'd like and then click Submit and this email will go just to the students in Group 2. Adaptive Release allows you to set conditions on items in your course and only students that meet those conditions are able to view those items. For example, let's say I only want students who achieve a 90% or better on a vocabulary quiz in the pre-course module to be able to access the week one materials. So I'm going to adaptively release the week one folder based on criteria of achieving a 90% or better on a vocabulary quiz. To set this, I click on the option arrows by the week one folder and select adaptive release. There are lots of advanced options for adaptive release, but I'll just show you a basic grade criteria. I'm going to select the item that I want the students to have achieved the certain grade on in order to access this week one folder, and that is the vocabulary quiz. I want students to achieve greater than or equal to a percent of 90. Once I've set those criteria, I click Submit, and that folder will now only appear to students who take the vocabulary quiz and achieve at least a 90%. You can customize the subscription options of the discussion boards in your course. When students subscribe to a discussion board, they receive email notifications that new posts have been made to that board. To locate the subscription options within the discussion boards, you will need to navigate to the discussion boards themselves. You may have a link within your course menu to go to discussion boards, but you can always find your discussion boards under the control panel, course tools, and discussion board. This course has some full course discussion boards and group discussion boards. I'm going to access the full course. Now when you create a discussion board, you click on Create Forum. There are many other options and customizations for the discussion board, but here we're going to focus on the Subscribe option under the Forum settings. The default is to allow members to subscribe to the forum, and when they do subscribe, they receive an email notification with each new post that simply includes a link to the post within the email. You can change these options to allow members to subscribe to individual conversation threads within each discussion board, and you can also choose the option of allowing the body of new posts, the actual text of new posts, to be included in the emails to the students that have subscribed. There's also the option to not allow subscriptions. I'm going to cancel out of this new forum and I'll show you that you can also adjust subscription choices for existing discussion forums as well. And you can do this by clicking on the option arrows for any existing forum, clicking Edit, and navigating to those forum settings and adjusting the subscription options there. In order for students to subscribe to a discussion board forum, when they're in the forum, if it's allowing students to subscribe to the forum as a whole, they can simply click the subscribe button right here at the top of the forum. If students are allowed to subscribe at the thread level, which I will set up here in the syllabus rough drafts forum, click on the options menu, edit, and I'll see if we can adjust this. Okay, great. It's already set to allow members to subscribe to threads. So students that are in the Syllabus Rough Drafts forum, let me click on it to open, they can click on an individual thread and choose subscribe and they'll get notifications for new posts on that thread only. Notice, since this is subscribed to threads, there is no subscribe button for the forum as a whole.
you can set up grading color codes to visually manage your Grade Center. To do this, navigate to the Grade Center under the Control Panel. Click on the Manage button and select Grading Color Codes. You have the option to change the background color of cells in the gradebook for items that are in a certain grading status. And you can also add criteria to highlight items that fall within a certain grade range. For example, I'd like items to be highlighted that fall below a 70% grade. So I'll select less than 70% and I'll select a background color of pink and click apply. I can add more criteria if I wish or delete this criteria if I'd like to start again. When I want the colors to show up within the gradebook, I click the Enable Grading Color Codes checkbox up here and click Submit. And now my grading color codes are enabled. So the cells highlighted in pink are students that are receiving a less than 70% on an assignment or as a total grade. If I want to disable the color codes for the meantime, I can go back to Manage, Grading Color Codes, and simply uncheck that button. My criteria stay the same and are ready for me to click on this again when I'd like to see those colors. The snipping tool in Windows makes it very easy to capture any part of your screen and copy and paste it into documents or save it and attach it into your course. To access the snipping tool, click on the Start button and then search for the snipping tool using the search box. Snipping tool quickly appears under Programs and you can click it to get started. The snipping tool opens ready to take a new snip. That means I can take my crosshairs, click and drag around any part of my screen that I'd like to capture. I'm going to capture this top left menu. I simply drag and release. Now that I've made my snip, it opens up in the snipping tool. From here, I can use the pen or the highlighter tool to make notes on the snip. I can then copy the snip and paste it into a document. Or I can save the snip as a PNG file or a JPEG file, and I can have it for future use. When I'm done, I can exit or I can start a new snip.